If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. And welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual business coach, spiritual and business coach. And today we are doing our first live on the air reading with one of our winners of our contest from the reviews sent in on iTunes. And I am so excited to be here with Lisa and to get to hear her story. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we got the the call started here, the, the video started. And uh, she was starting to, I said, well, how did you find me? Thinking she'd say, oh, well, I found your podcast or, oh, you know. I knew so-and-so or whatever. And she started to tell the story and I, I stopped her and I'm like, no, 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 let's get this on the air because I, I want everybody to hear it. So I haven't heard the whole story yet. I've only heard the beginning, but so, so welcome to the call, Lisa. Hey, and my dogs all want to say hello to all of the listeners as well. As you can tell, they are husky breeds. So they are now singing for all of us. <laughs> yes, baby. All right. So you were going to tell me how you found the podcast and how you found me. I, yes. So I, I realized now looking back that I've, I've been on this path for a long time, but had, uh, I guess, blinders on and was just kind of like toddling along. Fast forward to the morning of, of January 6th, and I was with my mother and had the, the gift of being with her at the moment that she passed from this life into the next realm. And in that moment, I, I watched her go and I was the, a door opened, she went through it and I saw what was, what was on that other side. And I've heard you speak before about, you know, when you're called, sometimes it's a gentle call and sometimes you're picked up and, and thrown down. And uh, I, of course, had the grief of, of losing my mom, but what I had even more and have experienced since is just this incredible, almost vibration that that I've been feeling, especially in, in the hours and in the, in the days after she passed that, that this in, incredible thing had just happened. And it took me a whole lot to try to figure out how to suss it out. And amazingly in just a random Google search, you popped up. <laughs> <laughs> what were you searching for out of curiosity? Do you remember? Some type of what happens when we die or yeah um i was looking for a podcast okay and i think it was like best best shamanic podcast or best something podcast and you popped up and i was like well you're the best so <laughs> tune in <laughs> yes <laughs> so that's how i found you and i've been listening to you ever ever since and i i met up with josh in at the end of february and it's just sort of been this, this path that's taken me now to you today. Fantastic. So here we go. So before oh. we get started, I do want to make an announcement. You're actually going to get to be the first person any of, out of anybody. I mean, nobody in my company even knows about this. My assistant's on vacation right now, so she doesn't know about it. Josh doesn't know about it. Nobody knows about it because I've been working. I've been, I've been out sick for like 10 days. And, and while I've been out sick, I've been manifesting, right? I've been manifesting this, this thing I've been. So I've been talking about the spirit guide school for a while, and I've been wanting to make it real on the web, right? Not just have it be my website, but to make it be a, a location on the web that people come to and they engage with and that they can find out, you know, see different classes that are available and be able to be in community with one another and the whole nine yards. And so I am in the process of putting that together. And so hopefully by the time this episode comes out, it will be live <clears throat> and I'm Amazing. super excited and it'll Yay. be live at spiritguideschool.com, spiritguidesplural.com. 
and we're, we're super excited that it's going to be there. And so, you know, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I think it, I think this is publishing in like three weeks from the time that we're recording this. And so I, I think, I think we can make it happen by then. If it's not good, if it's not fully functional by then, it will be at least partially functional and you'll be able to join and we'll be upgrading as we go. So this is gonna be a fantastic place for people to come and meet each other and be able to have community because that's one of the things I hear a lot from people is that they're in the middle of nowhere and or they're in the middle of the Bible Belt or you know whatever and they, they have nobody to talk to about stuff. And so this is gonna be a place where you can come and find community and talk to each other and and we're going to put out additional content and, you know, there's going to be all sorts of cool stuff going on on this, this platform. So I've been manifesting this for a while and I just got it, um, just got it, just found it, just, just putting it together. And I'm like, yay, I'm so excited. So this is an amazing thing, right? Yay. Right. Yes. Doesn't that and, sound and awesome? I am one of those people in the middle of nowhere. So right. I can't wait. Yeah. So that, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about it and I'm excited to share it with you and, and, you know, thanks for being the first person to hear about it. <laughs> this is amazing. Awesome. So, yeah. So Lisa was our first winner of the, uh, uh, spiritual evolution energy review process that we do here, which we call seer go figure. And uh, <clears throat> so what we do in this process is that we read your energy. We read where you are in your sp spiritual evolution process and <clears throat> where the blocks are in your energy field and what those blocks, you know, we'll identify what those blocks are and how they're likely playing out in your life, as well as if there's a quick fix, I will give it to you in the moment. If not, then we'll talk about how to address the issues at the end, because not everything's a quick fix, duh. And if it was, we'd all be like super enlightened yesterday, right? Um, exactly. And then, only. yeah, right. And then the, uh, what I will do at the end is, is give you an idea. So typically what we find, and this is one of the things to keep in mind is that don't take this as a report card on your life. Okay. This is an indication of where you are in the process of clearing this particular level of the work that you're working on. So if you have a ton of blocks, it's because you've just cleared a level and you've started a new one. If you have a, a very few blocks, it's because you're just about to clear a level and then you'll start a new one that'll have a bunch of blocks. This is not a life scorecard. This is just where you are in this particular thing. Okay. So don't go, Oh my God, I suck. Blah, blah. No, no, no. That's not how that works. Okay. <clears throat> Second thing is that I will also, if, if things are a function of other things, so if you have a block, that's a function of another block, this is one of the ways that people engage their resistance in a way that they can't see is that they work really hard on a block that is actually not the, the core cause, but the symptom of another block. And so if you work really hard on a symptom rather than on the core cause, then you will, it's a way to stay still. Right. And we don't consciously know that, but we subconsciously know that. Right. And so <clears throat> I will identify this is a, this is a sub, this is a, a symptom, not a cause. So don't work on this, go work on this. And, and I I'll also give you, if, if there is an optimized process, because sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't, but if I'll be looking at how, how optimized can you make the process? So it's like, okay, do this work before you do that work, because, you know, this work will help with that work sort of thing. Right. So, and we'll also identify what themes exist. <clears throat> so typically there are between one and three themes in any given level that you're working on. And so at the end, I will help you identify the theme. Sometimes we, we find the themes very early on, but sometimes it takes till the end to sort of wrap it all up. So that's what this is. It's a big process. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by looking at your aura. It's going to tell you where you are right now and what's going on in your life right now. If I see anything happening outside of your aura, I'll reference that. I, I don't always. In fact, a lot of times there's not anything out there, okay? But sometimes there is. Excuse me. 
and um <clears throat> whew, i had garlic bread with uh with cheese and, and 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 an egg for breakfast and you know trying to help get this cold to clear and uh, yeah it's coming back to visit me anyway <laughs> <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to I'll start with your aura and then I'll go into each of your chakras individually, starting at the crown and working way in my way down to the root. And then we'll talk about everything at the end. If you have questions as we go, please ask them as you have them. Don't wait to, to ask them. And um, we talked before the call that you do know the chakra system. So I'm not going to give you the definition of the chakras as we go, because you already know that. So that'll save us some time. And then please recognize that I am, <clears throat> I am channeling when I do this work. So my brain won't store the memories in the same way it stores them as I'm doing, uh, you know, as I'm having regular conversation. So, you know, a week from now, if you say, hey, remember in my reading when you said, the answer may be no. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I, you know, if I have to, I can always tap back in, but if you can tell me what I said, I can probably tell you what's going on. Cause I'll remember, you know, 15 to 20% of what I told you. So that's, that's sort of the, the shebang there. Any questions about the process before we get started? No. Uh, okay. The only thing I want to say is that I'm really grateful for your generosity and, and offering these up as part of, of the new podcast and, and incredibly appreciative of your skills and, and what you do. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to grab a little lozenge so that my mouth doesn't get dry while we're doing this. And normally for a reading like this, and I'm going to crank, crickle, crankle in the background here. So I'm going to drop in the lozenge on the table. Huh, there we go. So normally when I would do this kind of reading, I would turn the video off so that you would know I was reading you and not the, the micro expressions on your face or your body language. But because we're podcasting this, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> uh, that would be really boring for the people watching. <laughs> um, so, but just know that that would be the case if we were doing this in a private venue. And okay, so then do I have permission to enter into your energy field because I'm actually going to come into your energy field. So do I have permission to enter into your energy field for the purposes of this reading? You do. Okay. So if you have any shields up, please just make a little Kelly size hole so that I can come through and I will be right there. Give me one second. I have been warned that I tickle. So just know that. Hmm. Okay. So I haven't actually entered your field yet because I did see some stuff around you as I came to your energy field. Um, it feels like there's a lot of sort of forces spinning around you, a lot of different things happening around you in, in the, hmm. let me see if they'll give me more information than that. Hold on a second. It, it almost feels like you feel battered by the world around you. Like there's a lot of stuff moving and that you're getting sort of beaten up in the process of things spinning around you. Does that, that sound right to you? It does. I've been in a, a real state of flux for the last year or so okay. from a uh, moving standpoint to a determining if, if I'm going to be buying the house that I'm in standpoint, just okay. lots of lots of things going on. Yeah. And it feels like there's a lot of that. Let me come into your field and see what's happening on the inside. Hold on. Okay. So the, the impression that I'm getting is that there is a, it's like your, it's like your aura is filled with water and you're periodically pushing off from the bottom and coming up and gasping for air and then coming sinking back down into the water. It's this sense of, you know, <sighs> you know, that, that up and down sort of energy, um, which the water, when I feel into the water, the water is your defense mechanism against the buffering from the outside forces. It's like you've, you've built this sort of wall of 
protection in the water itself. And it's, it's keeping you from being bashed about, but it's also keeping you from being able to breathe completely. <laughs> so there's this, this sort of push me, pull you in the energy of that. And so the, the invitation would be to consider creating it to be a wall of water around you rather than filled with water because the wall of water would still provide the buffering without providing you with the I can't breathe factor. That would be sweet. Okay. So that's a simple shifting of your energetic to and, and just setting that intention. So why don't you just close your eyes and set that intention and I'll see, make sure it works for you so that I don't have to, you know, maybe shift it around if it's not working. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Good job. All right. How does that feel for you? Much better. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes we do things intuitively that we know we need and you needed that buffering. But if we don't consciously think it through, sometimes it sets us up with this sort of push me, pull you construct. Um, and so taking the time to, you know, consciously think through it and have, you know, look at it and say, oh, this may not be the best choice, right? <laughs> you know, we, we all do it. I, I've, I've done that. I've woken up and gone, why do I feel I'm like, oh God, that's why <laughs> you know, it's like, I said something up intuitively and it is just not optimal. Right. You know, So everybody does it, but it, it, when you can get in and look at it consciously, it's really helpful to be able to make adjustments that way. Okay. So let me see if there's anything else in here that they want me to know before we move into the chakras. Interesting. They're telling me no and then showing me something at the same time, which is, I think that's you telling me no and then them showing me it at the same time. So that's going to be interesting. So, so there's a swirl of energy across you. It's almost like a paintbrush that's going across the image of you inside of there, um, leaving this sort of streaky, not streaky, but you know, like like where you have, you put paint on, but it's not, the paint starts to run out as you're, you're going down. And so there's like skips in the paint and stuff. Let me see what that means, because I don't know what that means. That That's a new one on me. Let me see what they say. Okay. So it's almost like you're trying to paint over yourself. Like you're trying to paint out the, the image of yourself. Wow. And so this could have a variety of different reasons for it, some of which are entirely healthy and some are not. So I'm, they're not giving me more than that. We'll find out more about it as we go into the chakras themselves. But <clears throat> there's a way in which you're trying to just like hide yourself or paint over. You. It, it, no, it's not a hide. It's a paint over. So it's yeah. like a you know, like, I'm, I don't know if you're a DIY person, but I'm a DIY person. So, you know, it's like, I want to give a new fresh coat of paint to the, to the room and it make me feel better. Right. It's almost like you're trying to do that with yourself. So, you know, put a, put a fresh coat of paint on there. So I'm not, as I said, they're not giving me more than that, but we'll come into the chakras and I'm sure it'll become clear as we come into the chakras. So we're going to put a pin in that and then we'll just keep going. Okay. Anything else, guys? Uh, no. Okay. Now we're done. All right. So we're going to come into the crown chakra. Crown chakra. Let me see how the energy is flowing. Okay. So your crown chakra is partially shut down. So there is some energy flowing through it, but it's, it's, it's very low energy amounts. So it's like you... Every chakra, especially the root and the crown, are apertures. And so as you expand the aperture, you get more energy through. And as you close it, you, you get less. And yours is, is closed down a bunch, although you've just opened it up some as I'm talking to you because you're doing that. But the, the flow of energy. So in the crown and root chakras in particular, those are the places where we've received energy from the universe and the crown chakra or from the earth and the root chakra. When we feel under attack, we will close down our crown and root chakras to defend ourselves against outside energies. And that is typically a, you know, while you're under attack thing, right? <clears throat> 
But for some of us who grew up in challenged childhoods and environments where we weren't safe, that can become a default mode. I don't feel like that's the case for you right now. I feel like what's happening for you is that all of this buffering from the outside, the buffeting of all of the moving and shifting and things has caused you to sort of narrow your pathway because you're like, I can only take in so much, right? And so that's, it doesn't feel like it's a default for you for for the shutdown. Um, So there is a quick and easy answer to this one. It's, It's to do the tree meditation. And I will send you a link to that when we're done with this call. And for those of you listening, if you want to do it, that'll be in the Spirit Guide School platform as well. So we'll have that available for you. Um, and then the, let me see what else is going on with this. Because when we shut down our, our intake from the universe, we also shut down the ability to hear our guides and our higher self as much, right? And so... Doing the tree meditation will help you to open that up and that'll help you get better advice from your guides and your higher self. So yeah, they're going, we've been trying to talk to her. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) Always fun. And so let's see here. Let's see what else is going on in here. Um, Okay. That's interesting. What's that about? So I I was looking to see if you were an untrained channel because my sense is that you are, but the, what I, what they gave me was that you have a blocked or or diverted flow, blocked flow, and that that is causing some of the energy that's coming in through your crown chakra to shunt into your aura. You don't want that to continue because that your aura is not meant to absorb energy in that way. Thankfully, you've got a really low flow of it, but there are 88 eyes in your shot in your aura and they they form a neural net that reflects your neural net in your brain <clears throat> and you don't want to burn out those eyes in your chakra because that will burn out things in your brain you don't want to do that so what i'm seeing is that you have <clears throat> the the you are an untrained channel you have the ability to channel but that you have intuitively and reflexively put up a block to that so that you don't end up with things coming in and trying to possess you because, you know, that's effectively what channeling is, is conscious possession. It's, you know, possession with permission and the ability to evict, right? The, you've put up a protection about that, but that's what that's doing. Okay. So they're telling me that's what's been shutting down the flow of your of your energy is that that block is there and you haven't attuned it so that you can get energy, but not entities, right? So what you need to do is you need to shift that, that block that you have on there to allow energy through, but not entities through. And that will solve the diverted flow. It will solve the, the energy flow through your system. You're going to be surprised how much energy you have after that. That's going to be really interesting for you. And, and that, that will be a simple, it's just simply changing that sitting down in meditative state and just shifting it. Okay. You know, it's all about intention. So, you know, how do I do it? You intend to do it. Right. So, (laughs) so the next piece, let me take a look. Let me see where this is. Um, Yeah. You definitely got some mind on overdrive going on. That's that's the you know la, 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 la. I've got a plan and a backup plan and a backup plan for my backup plan da, 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 da. right it's all of that uh, that by the way is a control factor and so control is a safety issue so when you're feeling controlling you are feeling unsafe so go looking for where you're feeling unsafe and address that and you'll find that the overthinking starts to come down okay. I'd also recommend doing some vagus nerve reset for that. And if you, you Google that on the internet, you'll find a million different ways to do vagus nerves weight resets, but that'll help get you back into your sympathetic nervous system. And one last thing to check here. Hold on. Okay. Your connection to your masculine looks good. 
By the way, the the things that I look for, the automatic things that I look for are because I've done like 3000 of these scans over the last, you know, 15 years. And oh, yeah, 15 years. And so I've found that there are 38 common blocks that people on a spiritual path have. And so I look for those first. Not everybody has all of them. Not everybody has, nobody has all of them, but everybody has some of them. That's what I was trying to say. So, okay. Let me see if there's anything else in here that they want you to know. No. Okay. All right. So we're going to come down into the third eye, <clears throat> sixth chakra. And <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm testing your transmitter and receiver here. So your transmitter is where you go out to the Akashic, you get the information you need, you bring it back. You get a really strong projection of the transmitter going out. And a talk to the hand coming back. I'm aging myself here, but yeah. So typically what happens with this is people who have strong psychic abilities, they will have issues around if they're not receiving, you're, you're having issues around you don't want to take responsibility for the message. You don't want to have to tell somebody something that they don't want to hear. You don't want to have to see if somebody's going to die or if there's something horrible that's going to happen, or you're afraid that you're afraid of seeing what you're going to see and having to be responsible for that. And so the first thing I'm going to say is that you're not responsible to share anything you don't want to share. If you don't want to share it and the universe wants them to know it, they will find another way to get the information to them. Okay. You are within your rights to not, not say things. And secondly, <clears throat> is that the other piece is, is that we, the reason we do the talk to the hand piece, <clears throat> and I haven't looked at that yet, is to say that, you know, we, we don't want to necessarily get the information because then we would have to admit that we are powerful. And then what would that mean? Right. And so I'm, I'm guessing that that one's going to be a thing for you, just that based on what I'm feeling in your field. So I'll, I'm, I'm going to take a look at that in a minute, but, but that is probably part of the deal. So let me see if there's anything else showing up around that. Hold on. Oh, interesting. It's interesting. You're almost, it's almost like you're not seeing the energy coming back as being your energy. There's a, ah, something's coming at me sort of energy about it when I look at it. And it's, it's like you, you send it out and you forget you sent it out. <laughs> and, and you just, when it comes back, you go, ah, ah, what is that? Ah, what right? was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is, I, I, I'm not used to, I haven't seen this with somebody before, but what this says to me is that you're thinking it's going to take longer to get the information than it does. And therefore oh, it's, okay. it's being delayed and coming back. And that's, what's causing this. The, this information can be instantaneous. By the time you finish the thought, the answer should come. Okay. So that knowing that will solve this problem. Okay. Let me check to make sure that's right. Yeah. Knowing that solves this problem. No problem. There's, we often will place <clears throat> physical reality limitations on the spiritual world and they don't have the same physics as we do. And so you think, oh, well, I'm going to ask this question and then I'm going to wait for the answer and it could take me days and whatever. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> spiritual world is like, bang, there it is, right? Everything is in the eternal moment of now. It's all happening at the same time. There's no time in the spiritual realm. Therefore, it's all sitting in the Akashic records. All you got to do is just go grab it, right? <clears throat> okay. So, okay. Yeah, and that's actually the primary cause for you, okay? So that's that should solve that problem entirely. All right, so let's look at the receiver. So receiver is usually what people think of when they think of their intuition. It's just picking up on things in the world around you, right? So let me just check in on that. Interesting. All right. So 
you are picking up on the stuff, but you're not letting it in through your third eye, which is a weird thing to see. So what's happening is your third eye is right here in the center, right? And what I'm seeing is that it's hitting that and then sliding around the edges and sinking into your aura instead of going through your third eye. So it's like you're bypassing your third eye receiver and picking it up through your aura, which is, it, it's an empath skill, right? <clears throat> when we're empaths, we, we feel rather than know things sometimes. And so what you're getting is impressions of feelings. You're getting a kinesthetic response instead of a visual or an auditory response because you're not letting it in through your third eye. That explains so, a lot. Okay. All right. So uh, let me see what's going on with that. Okay. That's the, I don't want to know piece <laughs> that, so I knew we had an own your power piece in here. I was like, I could feel it. That's where that one is. Is it, that's the, I don't want to know that I'm that if I only feel it and I don't see it or hear it, then it, then I can say, oh, well, it's just a feeling. It's not a big deal. Right. Yeah. I see you relate yes. to that. Okay. <laughs> I do. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah, let me, let me look at the own your power piece. Let me see what that's about. Hold on. Okay. So what they're telling me is that it's, it's bound up in your trust in the universe issue. So when we have a hard time trusting the universe, we are the universe and the universe is us. When we have a hard time trusting the universe, we have a, it's, it's often because we don't trust ourselves, right? <clears throat> because they're the same thing. You know, we are one, right? And so when you don't keep your word to yourself, then you become untrustworthy to yourself. When you don't defend yourself and keep yourself safe from others or from attack or from anything else, right? If your boundaries aren't good and people are constantly crossing them, then you're not trustworthy to yourself. When you don't keep your word to yourself or others, then you are not trustworthy to yourself. You're out of integrity, right? And so all of these things build up a lack of trust inside, which then is reflected in a lack of trust in the universe. Okay. And so the your your not willingness to own your power is partly in regards to the fact that you're finding yourself untrustworthy and when we are untrustworthy and we come up through environments that are less than pleasant we have a well of rage inside of us and that well of rage when triggered can go kaboom and you know, then we'll, we'll kaboom all over everybody and then feel really bad about it later, but it didn't stop the kaboom. Right. And the, when we, when we feel like we can't be trusted and we kaboom, then we can't give ourselves permission to have power because as ethical heart centered people, the more power we have, the more the kaboom destroys and we don't want to lay waste to the world. So we won't let ourselves have our power. That explains a lot. I actually met my inner child. I had a vision of her and mm -hmm. she looks kind of like Wednesday Adams, except really, really angry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is the, this is what's happening and why you're limiting your power. And so there's a lot of pieces that go into this. I've sort of laid them out for you here. So I recommend you listen to the recording again, but the, that's the general concept for you. Okay. All right. So let me see if there's anything else in here around that. Yeah. They're saying you have a, a, at least one past, one big past life where you were killed for your gifts. And that's a very common reason why people have this block, but they're saying it's not nearly as crucial as the other pieces that I just talked about. Okay. Um, okay. Let me see. Hold on one more thing. Okay. So I'm seeing a push me, pull you in this one thing. There's a block that I call creativity usurped by the mind. So it's like you steal your creativity from your, your second chakra, which is where it's supposed to be. And you use, you use your brain to be creative instead of being creative in your second chakra. Um, 
And I feel like there's a push me pull you on this because you do it in some places, but I feel like there's like art that you do in which you don't do it there. Right. So like you're, you're, you're trying to balance it. You intuitively understand that you need to balance it, that you need to like try and pull it out of your head. Uh, but <clears throat> it's, it's still in this battle for who's controlling it. So the invitation would be to allow yourself Allow your mind to let go of your creative process and to, to allow yourself to be in creativity without being in your head. Are you a writer? I do some writing. Yes. Okay. That's where they're, they're saying that's where this is happening, right? Is in your writing because you're in that, that language center, which is a different part of your brain than the art center. They're saying that in the writing space is where you're missing out on a lot of your creativity because you're working your head too hard. And so what they're saying is allow the thoughts to wander and put an intention out for what you want to write about and let it percolate in your energy and say, you know, this is what I want. And then wait for the muse to come forward and for the inspiration to strike and then just sit down and let it flow through you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Anything else in the chakra? No. Okay. Come down to the throat chakra. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So I don't know if you were looking at me when I did this, but typically this shows up as a physical thing for me. And so typically I'll see, you know, my mouth will open a little bit or a lot or whatever, and then I'll feel energy either coming through or not, or, you know, or whatever. And for you, what I got was just me opening and closing my mouth, almost like I'm trying to, to decide whether or not I'm opening my mouth. This is your self-expression right? So this is the reflection of your self-expression. And so it's a, it's a, I'm opening my mouth, I'm closing my mouth, I'm opening my mouth, I'm closing my mouth. But at no time is any energy coming out. So there's this, uh, I think I want to do it. Uh, mouth open. And then maybe not mouth closed. But at no time, is there an actual yes, I'm doing it. It's a, I'm trying it on, I'm trying it on. I think I can, I think I can, but not an actual commitment. That's been about the last six months. Okay. So there you go. <clears throat> All right. So let's come into this chakra. I'm going to start with something I don't normally start with because it feels related to the self-expression. not the right one. So there's typically a hiding your true self, not willing to be seen, right? Um, and it feels related to that, but it's not that. Um, mm. Ah, it's a fear of attack and humiliation. That's what's showing up in here. It's a, if I'm seen, then I'm open to attack. If I'm, if I'm seen, then I can be a target. And so that's what's showing up. The, hold on, let me check these other two. Yeah, so the people-pleasing communication piece is showing up as, as a function of that. It's like, well, if I say the things that people can hear and I say the things that they'll, they'll, they're willing to receive, then I won't be attacked. Um, this is a manipulation technique that children use on their parents to try and control them and try and keep themselves safe. It is a child-based energy pattern. And, and, you know, those of us who've had parents who need to be manipulated can tell you that it doesn't always work. So <clears throat> um, the, the reason children go into this pattern is because they can't leave when there's a problem. Um, but you are an adult. You can leave when there's a problem, 
whether that's leaving, you know, the the space you're in and the person you're talking to who's being abusive, or whether it is the internet and dealing with trolls. And so, you know, and I'll also remind you that trolls these days actually drive your engagement. So they're actually a bonus. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I poke the trolls. <laughs> Because, <laughs> because it drives engagement and it gets my videos seen better. I'm like, really? Tell me more about that. And they go, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, great. Thank you for that. Thank you for the engagement. <laughs> so, I you know, that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just if you, if you look at your trolls, not as people who are trying to abuse you, but instead as people who are giving you extra engagement through their emotional attachment to your content, then, you know, you're just like, oh, fantastic. Tell me more about how I'm a horrible person. <laughs> and when you get tired of it, you can block them, you know, it's fine. But, you know, in the meantime, they've driven your engagement and life goes on. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's that's that's really what's driving this self-esteem or self-expression piece. This this open, close, open, close, open, close thing is that you're afraid of the the backlash. Right. Like you feel like you have things to say that are going to stir the pot and you're afraid of the, the splash that comes from stirring the pot, right? <clears throat> the burning splash. And you know, what I'm going to say is put on some asbestos and call it good. Okay. Stir okay. the pot, okay. baby, stir the pot. <laughs> I've been giving some consideration to starting some type of social interaction with, with my writing in some yeah. form or another. Yeah. So that's, that's the piece that this is about is, okay. you know, the, and then, and okay. So there's another thing that they're giving me now that you've said that. Um, so when we do people pleasing communication, we're trying to manipulate. Okay. When you are writing and creating social engage, you know, social interaction around that writing, <clears throat> You're holding a container. Okay. So this is different. You're not trying to control the people in the container. What you're doing is setting the energetic of the container and holding the boundary of that. And that's a different animal because then it becomes not, can I control what you're doing, but do you belong here or don't you? Because if you don't belong here, I'm going to boot you. Right? Right. And that becomes, <clears throat> you're holding a safe container for everyone in the container at that point, so that you don't allow the people coming in being trolls to taint the energetic you're creating. Right? Okay. So when you reframe it that way, because you can't control somebody else's behavior, but if you have, if you hold the container, if you hold the, the, the energetic space that you can control because it's your space, this is my space, whether or not you get to be in it is based upon whether or not you can be a good community member. Right. <clears throat> and if you can't, there's a door, don't let it hit you in the butt on the way out. Right. And, and I don't care that you're leaving. Right. <laughs> it's like, we're all going to be happier when you're gone sort of energy. Right. Because there, there are people out there who uh, their whole happiness is, is being disruptive, right? <clears throat> and so, this you know, true. you either allow it or you don't in your space. And so if your fear that's keeping you from doing this is that they're going to do that in your space, well, just give yourself permission to boot them. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Anything else in the chakra? Okay, there's something else here. It's not a block in the chakra, but there's a tie it together piece. So give me a second. Mm, okay. <clears throat> what they're telling me is that this relates back to the owning your power piece. And so part of you not... Mm, yeah, okay. So that's part of the, the... Remember, we talked about the lack of trust in self around the owning right. your power piece, if you can't trust yourself to hold your boundaries and to be willing to be the bad guy and kick them out, 
then you will not give yourself the permission to do that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so these are all interrelated, right? Yeah. So pay attention to that. And, and you know, this is about learning to set boundaries better, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's come down. We're, we're done. Yeah, okay, now we're done. Now we can come into the heart chakra. Okay, you're great at giving out love. You're like this open, lovey, dovey, you know, yes, here's my love into the world person. Oh, interesting. Receiving love for you feels like, mm, how do I say this? Um, <clears throat> like an energy blast, like a kaboom, right? It's, it's like all of it comes at you all at once and wax into you and you get thrown on your ass. So that's that, okay. Does that resonate? <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's not a kind and loving process for you with the receiving piece. There is an expectation that the love you receive is going to be overwhelming and and destabilizing. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. So, and it's, it's, it's interesting because when I look outside of you, the love is just as, as calm and, and peaceful and, you know, caring and all the things that you send out. But the moment it hits your energy field, you focus it and explode it into yourself because of that expectation. Wow, that's not a perspective I'd, I'd ever really considered. Hmm. And so the invitation here would be to change the expectation that love is destabilizing. <clears throat> and this feels like it's a childhood thing. It feels like, you know, there was, you had people in your life who were very loving, but that the love was often destabilizing in some way. Um. Oh, okay. Does that make sense to you? It does now. Okay. So this is your expectation that that's the case. And now you've internalized your history and made it energetically true by your own expectations and limiting beliefs around it. So if you can change that limiting belief and allow that love can be as, as super easy and peaceful and loving and and comforting rather than destabilizing as you know i mean you're you're putting it out that way so if you can expect that what you put out is the same thing that you get back that as as you as you will so you as you sow so you so you so shall you reap right it's if you can change your expectation to be i this is how i put it out this is how i receive it back and i won't receive anything else right <clears throat> then you can shift this energetic. When I was two, I had a brother who died of childhood leukemia. Obviously very traumatic for my family. The love that I received as a small child, especially from my mother and, and even in my teenage years, came with a lot of angst from her. Yes. And that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a you know, filter that out of your expectations. Lose the angst. Yeah. So, <clears throat> okay, let me see what else is going on in here. Okay, not, no problems with betrayal here. So that looks good. Still grief in your heart, but that's not surprising given how recently your mom passed and, and you know, childhood loss of a brother. There's a sound healing for clearing grief that's available. Again, that'll be in the, I'll, I'll send that to you, but there'll be a, uh, that'll be in the, in the spirit guides school system as well for anybody who wants it. Um, that's a freebie just because so many people need it. And 
So the thing I'm going to say about that is that it is cumulative. So don't listen just once. Listen until you feel like you're not getting anything else out of it. Okay. And um, yeah, so that'll be helpful. And then let's see here. What else is going on? Yeah. Nope. That's everything in this chakra. Okay. All right. Let's come down and uh, okay. They're they're okay. They're asking me to ask you if you have questions. I don't think so at this point. Okay. Maybe sure they're priming you for a question in the next chakra. It, it happens sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> let's go into the the third chakra. Third chakra is the most complicated. So let's see what we find. I'm going to start with your inner child. I'm going to try and wipe the image you gave me so I get my own. Okay, so the first thing I see is her skipping down the hallway. She's in black patent leather shoes and white socks. Okay, I'm starting to see the Wednesday Adams thing. There's, there's pigtails, black hair, pigtails, you know, yeah. <clears throat> um, and she's skipping away from me. So I'm trying to get her attention. She's in a, you know, a little girl dress, but it is a dark color. She just, she will not, she will not turn around. Let me see if I can grab her hand. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Now I see the Wednesday Adams thing. Okay. She turned, she's, she's skipping, skipping, skipping away from me, away from me, away from me. I grab, you know, I, I grab her arm to try and get her attention and she goes <laughs> in my face, you know, like, <sighs> I'm like, okay, yeah, yes. <laughs> Haven't had that happen before, but yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, she's she's not happy being interrupted. She wants to be left alone. She is having her own experience and and skipping along. So skipping is typically an indication of she's okay, right? She's like <clears throat> getting through. I see skipping a fair amount when I'm looking at the inner child energies, but she's in the hallway. She is not in her room. She is not in a, you know, I, I see, see these children in different spaces, depending upon what, what their experience is. She's also not in a dungeon. I see, sometimes I see inner child in, in a dungeon, dirty and filthy clothing and, you know, whole nine yards, but she is skipping down a hallway and away from adults. And so she is in movement. She's not in a safe space. If you're in your room, you're in a safe space, right? So I can often look at their room and see how they feel about themselves and things like that. She is in a hallway. So she's in transition and she's not in her safe space. She's not in a dungeon, but she's not in her safe space. So there would be some work to do with your inner child on Usually when they're angry at this level, there is, this is again, that, that disconnect of not being able to trust yourself, not be, not taking good care of yourself. The inner child gets really angry when you don't let them play enough, when you are too harsh with them, when you make them work, when they're still, when they're tired, when you, <clears throat> when you are, when you are overly harsh with yourself, right? So there's a lack of trust that comes from that. This is part of the inner trust issues, right? That we were talking about in the sixth chakra. And, and so there would be a fair amount of time that you'll probably need to spend trying to form a relationship with her. Okay. Yes. So that just means sitting in meditation and inviting her to come and visit with you. She probably won't show up at all for the first month, two months. She'll probably ignore you entirely and just be like, eh, I don't trust you to keep showing up. So why should I bother? Right. <clears throat> so you're going to have to be really patient on this one. Okay. Okay. I suspected as much when I saw her. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's take a look at the identity. Hold on. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. So normally, what I see is somebody standing up and being seen or somebody standing behind a mask or somebody, you know, 
being, you know, something else and then saying, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain or, you know, something like that. And I am not seeing that. What I'm seeing is your inner child lobbing effectively identity grenades out at people. And so like it's she's sitting there and she's hiding behind the wall and she's throwing this identity out in front of her and it's exploding and putting powder up in front of it. And, and so it's, it's, but it's different for each person. So it's like, kabang, kabang, kabang. So what I'm seeing on this is, is it's really like you're being a chameleon. It's like for each person you're interacting with, you're being somebody else. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, and this is your inner child going, nope, you don't get to see me. You don't get to see me. You don't get to see me. This is who you see me as. This is who you see. I mean, I'm controlling everything, right? And that's what this, that's what these, you know, identity bombs are. These, these, and it didn't, it didn't, they're masks, but they're individual masks for each person. So if you talk to five different people in your life, they would probably say that you were five different people, right? Because of the way that you're, you're individually choosing what bomb you're throwing at what person, right? So, oh yeah, yeah. So that's a <clears throat> that's an indication that nobody actually sees you. So if you're feeling unseen, that would be why. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a look at the stories in here. Oh, you've definitely got the martyr thing going on big time. Like I will sacrifice myself on the altar of other people's happiness until the cows come home. That's the whole thing. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, problem with that is that you can't control whether or not anybody else is ever happy. Well, this is true. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of a, you're, you're, you're hosing yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. All so, again going back. Yeah. To childhood. Yes. And even the throwing of the masks to see who might see at that yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, let's see what the next, let me look at the next ones. Yeah, you got some not good enough going on in here too, which again would easily go back to the childhood where you can't replace your brother, right? Um, <clears throat> you can't fill in the hole that he left in the family sort of thing, right? Because that's what we try and do as children. And that not good enough is still showing up here. Uh, it's, it's, it's expanded past that, obviously, but yeah, it's still in there. <laughs> you've got this interesting sort of twist on not important and it's, 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 it's almost like all of the love and energy that you got, you discounted and said, it doesn't count because it was meant for my brother. I'm not relevant like all that desperate clinging energy that you got from your parents around, you know, the, you know, I've got to hold on to you, whatever, because I might lose you too, sort of energy right. feels like in your head, you were like, oh no, they're just, they're just worried about him, not about me. There's a, there's a way that you dissociated from that love that was coming your way because of the desperation attached to it, <clears throat> because it was coming with grief right? Yes. So the, the love was coming with grief and it was too overwhelming for you to receive it that way. That's where the bang comes with, right? And so your way of sidestepping the grief was to sidestep accepting the love because you could say, oh, it's not mine, it's his. Okay. Okay. So okay. the... <clears throat> The way this would manifest in current life would be that you don't trust the love that comes to you. 
It's like, oh no, that can't be for me. Right. Right. So that goes back to this childhood stuff. And so this one is going to be a process to let it go. Right. Um, Because that's, that's some, it's, it's child thinking that's been developed into a complex adult coping process. And so you've got to unwind the child thinking with the adult self and then unwind the habit of the assumptions that you're making in the present day. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a process, but it can be done. Okay. So, yeah, so that's, that's where that is. Let me see what else. I'm also feeling like there's a little too big, too much in here, right? Like, like you were, it's, it's this, again, it's this weird push me, pull you, which really reflects out to that, that energy that we experienced in the, in the aura, right? It's that push me, pull you that was going on. But there's this weird push me, pull you happening around, um, you know, you, you were, there's this, and, and it's, it's tied to your creativity. Um, there's this, and again, your childhood, but your, your creativity in childhood in specific. And it's a, you know, like there was this energy of, we look at me, I'm being creative, I'm being, you know, big and whatever. And, and your parents going, oh, no, don't be that big. Right. And, and, you know, I don't know if you were playing drums or, you know, you were being doing something that was loud or I don't, I don't know what it was, but there was a, we, we want to encourage you, but uh, not quite that much. Right. It's, it's, it, it's a, it's a, again, a push me, pull you going on where it's like, yes, go you and not so loud. Right. Or, or something like that. It's, it's sort of that energy. Does that, or not so, not so chaotic or, you know, and, 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 and chaotic probably feels better. It feels like a more accurate term because as I'm feeling into their energy, they were still traumatized and overdone. And so the chaos was more than they could hold, but they didn't want to stifle you because they wanted you to have your best life because, you know, that's what they wanted for you. But they were just like, oh, okay, we're done now. Right. It's, it's that energy. Does that make sense to you? I built my first drum set out of, I don't know, <laughs> Uh, coffee cans and plastic containers and I think the drumsticks were chopsticks in <laughs> in the basement of my parents house when I was a child and I think I was 14 when they finally gave in and actually got me a real drum set <laughs> okay you know I I always pick the quote-unquote random option and yeah I'm always always bang on you know <laughs> I think I'm being random and yet not okay there you go <clears throat> oh no so, you you literally hit it on the head <laughs> the drum head in this case the but drum um, head. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yeah so that makes sense then all right let me see if there's anything else in here that they want to know about oh I, they, no they're telling me I have to identify what that's going on now so what that results in is this, this is, remember when I showed you in the fifth chakra, the open and close of your mouth, yeah, right? That's the reflection of this energy from your parents. The go, stop, go, stop, go, stop, go, stop. It's, that's the same energy. Okay. So they're related. So when you can clear that and give yourself permission to go full bore, then you'll be able to leave the mouth open and let the energy out. Let that self-expression out. Okay. That helps resonate a lot. It resonates yeah. a lot more now that we've gotten to this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're saying that that's everything in this chakra. So let's come down into the second chakra. Okay. So second chakra is, is got some good energy going in it. I can feel that creativity that we talked about that's trying to balance out that that stealing the creativity in your your sixth chakra with the mind. I can feel that energy. There that energy is ready to just go kaboom and like be, yeah, baby, right? It's just waiting for permission to do that. So no blocks here on that. Let's see what else is going on here. Okay, so we've got some attachment energy going on. So let me see is it, if it's a person or a goal or a thing. Hold on. 
Okay. So there, this is, <clears throat> this is an attachment to a goal. And what I'm seeing is that you're holding on to the how with a death grip. So you've got this vision of where you want to go in your life and what you want to do. And you have this, like, this is what I want and this is how it's going to happen. <clears throat> and that is actually holding you back from achieving it because our job is not to do the how our job is to do the what the universe. So we provide the destination and the motivation. So we say, this is where I want to go. And I'm going to take a step in the direction and I'm going to keep walking until it manifests. Right. And then the, we provide the destination and the motivation. The universe provides a navigation. That's the how, right? So you've got to let go of the how in order to find your path to what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> you, you keep your eye on the ball, right? I want X, Y, and Z you know, and be careful to say what you actually want, not the how of how you think you're going to get there, right? So if what you actually want is to be in a loving relationship, in a safe environment, with your finances all taken care of, and no stress about that, and with a group of friends who are super, comf you know, super great around you, good community, blah, 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 if you've got all of this, right? That's a core what? Okay. Notice I did not say I want to be in a romantic partnership where I am married. I want to have X number of friends and live in this location and, you know, have, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month coming in and, you know, whatever, right. That's a how, right. You want to stick to the what and say, this is what I want. And I'm going to let you figure out how to bring it to me. So the best example of this is to watch the movie Under the Tuscan Sun. That is a That's classic a example movie. of getting what you want without the how that you thought it was going to be. Right? So... That's what I'm talking about is you, you need to leave the, the door open to the universe, right? Now, I'm not going to say you can't say how much money you want to make every month. You absolutely can do that if you want to, but the, but you don't hold on to the, how that money is going to come in. Right. Okay. So, you know, and, and in fact, with money, <laughs> it is actually better to give an actual dollar amount to the universe and, you know, base that dollar amount on something though, that dollar amount needs to not be arbitrary. It needs to be, you know, I want to have X amount of dollars to do X amount of things, right? It needs to be related to something that you can get excited about, especially if it's a business thing where you have to get motivated every day to get up and do the things that you want to do. Then, you know, having the, the what it's going to cover for you is super helpful in that regard. If you are just looking to change your lifestyle and you're not looking to build a business per se, then I would say leave the dollar amount of the money out of it and instead talk about the, the energy of the experience of being financially secure, right? And that's, that's different, right? Because that can manifest in a lot of ways. And so <clears throat> it's, it's literally about making sure that you know what you're trying to accomplish because with a business, you have to define, you have to give the business the intention to create the income, right? With your life, you're creating an experience of your life and that's different. And that's why those, those things are different. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, good. Okay. Let me see what else is in here. No problem. Addiction. Sexuality looks okay but a little limited it feels like there's this relates back to the the love piece that you've got the sexuality and the love piece connected and so there's a holding back on the sexual side that is reflected in the sort of this you know hands up to protect yourself from the, the love coming in banging into you sort of thing with the grief so those are reflective of one another. I don't feel like there's dysfunction there. I just feel like, you know, you're, you're being cautious because that's, you know, the physical expression of love. 
And so they're like, mm, I don't know about this, right? There's like, mm, I'm, I'll go here, but only to a certain extent, right? So as you start to, to deal with the love pieces, this you can then expand that. It will have to be a conscious expansion into the sexuality side because it is a habit for you to be this way at this point. And so mm -hmm. it's not going to be an automatic fix, but you have to do the love piece first before this will work to fix it unintentionally. Okay. <clears throat> and then yeah, so passion, passion is having some similar issues here. Right. So the passion is reflecting the same thing around the love and stuff too. It's it's like it's not the same because you're not receiving anything. Passion is an internally created experience that you then express out into the world. But there is a, it's like you've internalized the, that's what it is. Okay. So because the energy came in with love, with grief, with, and the grief was overwhelming and passion can feel overwhelming uh, when you really engage it, it can be like, wah, driving force, ah, it takes over everything, ah, just like grief, just like love, right? You know, but, but, but grief is like crushing when it's overwhelming, right? And passion is like explosive when it's overwhelming. So it's not, not, not explosive. That's not exactly right. It's just, it's expansive and it, it, it takes you over, right? It's emotionally engulfing. Right. In the same way that that grief came at you with the love, you're afraid of uh, engaging your passion too much because you don't want to be that person to somebody else. Okay. Okay. Again, when you address the love issue, this is going to be impacted by that. And you can bypass it in now while you're working on the love issue, because that one's going to be a little bit more, but <clears throat> you can bypass it by giving yourself permission and by saying everybody has the right to take in at, at whatever level they want. Right. That, you know, you, you can put it out at whatever level you want. People will titrate for their own experience. Right. And if okay. they can't, well, then they won't, won't be in your presence and that's okay. You know, you can't make yourself smaller to make somebody else's experience better. You can, but it's not a good idea, right? Yeah, because there's always going to be somebody who can't take it in, right? right. I, so I had an experience. I'm going to share a story with you on this one. I Years ago, oh God, almost 20 years, over 20 years ago now, ooh, I took the Millionaire Minds Train the Trainer program, Peak Potentials Train the Trainer. And one of the things that they had you do was stand up on stage and sing to try and get over your stage fright, whatever. I had been speaking on stage and singing on stage for years. It was not a push for me. It wasn't a stretch. And I wanted to do the exercise and have it be a stretch. And so what I said was, look, I'm afraid to set space in front of a room of 300 people because I think they're not going to understand it. I said, I will do the exercise the way that you want it done. I will do the, the setting of the space with a song. But what I need you to do is give me a minute to collect myself before I start singing, before you get up in my face about it, because I need to set the container. And he's like, yeah, okay. And so I did that and I set the space and I, I, I sang the song. I did a little chant and then I closed the space and, <clears throat> and I came off stage and what was very interesting to me, and I'm going to share this with you because I think it's going to be important for you to understand this is that. People came up to me. I had some people walk up and say, wow, amazing space. That was so beautiful. I felt that hit and that was just awesome. And then I had other people come up and go, you have a really pretty voice. And, and I really liked it. And I could tell that they had the experience, but they did not have the vocabulary to express it. Right? I could feel that. They, they knew something happened, but they didn't know what. Okay. Yeah. And this is what I want to tell you is that people will take you in at whatever level you will allow them to take you in and whatever level they will allow themselves to take you in. They may not have a vocabulary to express what they've experienced and that's okay. 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 So yeah. don't titrate yourself for them. Okay. You're denying them the experience. You know, even if I don't know how to express it, I want to have the experience. That's some of the most transcendental experiences, transcendent experiences that people have had are things that they have no words for. 
Okay. Oh, this is true. Right. Okay. So this is what I'm saying. Okay. All right. <clears throat> You're denying people their transcendence. Stop it. Yes. Far be it for me to want to do that for yes. other people. Right. Okay. All right. Let me see if there's anything else in this chakra. No. Okay. Coming down into the root chakra. Let's check your grounding first. Okay. So you have a steel plate under your feet and the steel plate under your feet is a representation of you having handed somebody else in your life, the ability to pass judgment on you and pull the, the feet out from under you, right? That they, they get to, <clears throat> that they get to determine whether or not your life is valid. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, that would have been my older brothers, my family as a small child, there was an age difference between us. I was much younger. They were much older. They were everything. And whether I mattered to anything was whatever the attention that I did or didn't get from them. Right. So, so it's collective for you instead of a single person. And that's why that explains why I didn't see a single leash. Usually I see a single leash going to a single person, but it, this feels like it wasn't a single leash. So that makes more sense to me. So the key is to remove permission for them being able to judge your life. Because what's happening right now is that you are pulling energy up from the earth, but it's having to come up and around the, the steel plate and it's coming up in and in, but when it goes to go out, it's not actually going out, it's hitting the steel plate. And so you're not getting a full circuit with the earth. And so the key is just to remove permission. What you have to recognize is that one of the best ways to make yourself miserable in life is to live your life by your values and judge your life by your family's values. Oh yeah. That's been an overarching theme my entire life. Yeah. So stop that. Live your life by your values, judge your life by your values or live your life by their values and judge your life by their values, but you cannot mix and match. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the push pull that's existed. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. So in this moment right now, I want you to decide whose values are you living by? I'm living by mine, baby. Okay. And whose life are you, whose, whose values are you judging your life by? I'm going to figure out what mine are and I'm going to live by mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you hear how, equ on, how equivocal, equivocating you became in the second one? So let's try that again. Because you knew you were mine. living by yours. Then, but then suddenly when you were judging, you were like, well, uh, I got to figure it out. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So let's say that again. Whose life, are, whose, whose values are you judging your life by? My own. All right. And you're not allowing anybody else to pass judgment on you. Say that. I am not going to allow anyone to pass judgment on me. Not even my family, especially not my family. Especially not my family. Okay. Let me check the, the steel plate. Okay. It's starting to dissolve. Okay. It's not dissolved yet because you aren't, you aren't fully sure of exactly what you're saying yet. But as you, as you get more solid in that belief structure, that's going to dissolve more and that'll solve itself. That'll take care of itself. Okay. And I also feel more, I feel an energy, a, a root energy that's awesome. happening as Good. we talk about that. Yeah. Good. Okay. Let me take a look and see what else is in here. Yeah, they're telling me I'm not going to worry about the family dynamics because we've already talked about everything that's relevant. Um, <clears throat> we've got some fears around safety and security. Those relate back to the, you know, being afraid of being attacked and being, you know, come at your face and things like that. And so that's when you deal with all of that, all of this will go away. It's not, you don't have to worry about addressing it. Although the Vegas nerve reset would be helpful. Okay. And then Okay, so what I'm feeling is that there's this big desire for community, but also that you're completely armored up against community. 
this we've got a theme of push me pull you here you know this is one of the themes that it's going through um <clears throat> it's like i want my community but uh, i'm 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 fine i'm i am solid unto myself and there is no need for anyone else and i've got this right it's like mm, but i want community but uh, but uh, mm, uh, mm, right yeah so just because you can doesn't mean you should and sometimes you know it's okay to let other people in and let them help you just because you don't need the help just because you can do it by yourself doesn't mean you should because your fierce independence is keeping you from connecting very fair okay all right i see if there's oh manifestation let me check the manifestation bubble hold on Oh, your manifestation bubble is awesome. It slows down a little at the third chakra, but nothing is stopping the manifestation. So cool. Go you. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So let me see if there's anything else they have for you before we wrap up. Nope. They're showing that's everything, although they're spinning it. <laughs> so what they're showing is that that it's a it's a spiral right it's a this is this is a series of you're you're dealing with some core issues here right and what's happening is that so my, my what i'm saying to you is expect that you're these are not going to be one and done okay that that these are going to be layers of an onion sort of thing, right? So one of the things I talk to people about is that, you know, the work that you do is a spiral and your core issues are spokes on the spiral. And so you think, okay, I've, you, you hit the spiral, you, know, you hit the spoke over here and you're like, okay, I finished it. I worked it. I did it. I'm done. And you get around to the spiral and you come down to the next level and you spin around and you hit it again. You go like, wow, why? why i did the work on this why why am i doing this again ah, right and then eventually you do the work right and and it, you know this happens over and over and over again until eventually you're like oh hello old friend what do you have to teach me today right and and so i would encourage you to go to the hello old friend piece uh because the why 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 is nothing but resistance okay um and it, it, you know, these are, these are issues that are, you know, they were formed very early in life and therefore they're going to be core issues throughout until you've worked your way to the bottom of the onion. Right. So just know that this is not one and done. And it doesn't mean that you're defective, that you've come back to the same thing again. You know, when you, when you have a core issue, you will come back to it over and over again. Each time we'll be at a deeper level and you'll have a deeper level of understanding and you'll have a deeper level of healing. Okay. Okay. So set your expectation for that so that you are not upset at yourself and surprised when it, when it shows up again. Okay. Again, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me see. We know the themes. We've got the push me, pull you. We've got the, the self-expression, you know, open, close, open, close that push me, pull you there too. We've got the need to clear the, the trauma and to change the way that the love is coming in and the need to be in integrity with yourself so that you can learn how to trust yourself again and therefore trust the universe. Okay. The, the biggest thing right now <clears throat> that's holding back your manifestations are doing great, but your ability to remember, we said the, you're batting it away, the, the receiving piece when the, with the psychic, you know, the transmitter piece, this is exactly what's happening with your manifestations right now too. Okay. okay. You're batting them away at the last second because you, you don't trust yourself. You don't trust your power. You don't trust the universe. And so at the last second you're going, nope. Okay. okay. So the, I would say if I were to pick an order of operations for you, are you currently in a relationship? I am not. Okay. So then the order of operations for you would be to address this integrity piece, this, this trust in yourself piece, 
because that is the single biggest issue that you're ad- you need to address right now. <clears throat> and then that you then you can do the other pieces as you see fit in there. Um, <clears throat> but the the integrity piece is huge for you right now. So you know the the trust in yourself piece, right? right. So. You need to make sure that you don't say to yourself that you're going to do anything unless you actually do it. You need to keep your word to yourself. You need to set boundaries and hold them. You need to be in, you know, be working on reestablishing that relationship with your inner child because all of these are related. They're all the same piece, right? And then the other thing I would do for you is to make a a list of ways in which the universe has not let you down and the ways the universe has protected you and supported you so that you can read those on a regular basis. And then, you know, ways in which you took care of you. And this is again about taking care of yourself, not just keeping your word to yourself, but taking care of yourself. You know, if you're working and you have to pee, get up and go pee. Don't make yourself wait. Okay. It's the most basic thing, right? Not when I get to the end of this paragraph, not when I get to the end of this thing I'm doing, not when just go pee. Okay. You know, these are, this is basic, very basic self-care, right? You know, you need to learn how to take care of yourself as though you are the beloved in your own life. Not as though you are the workhorse in your own life. Okay. Okay. Right now you're somewhere between slave and workhorse. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. So you need to shift the way that you're treating yourself. Okay. These are all integrated into that, that core issue that's going on there. Okay. Okay. All right. Any questions? I don't know where I, no, no. I don't know where I'd begin to ask questions. I don't know how many pages of notes I've just taken. (laughs) (laughs) This is why we record these so that you can listen again. I will will warn you that I have been told by countless people who've received readings that they will go back and and listen to this the eighth, ninth, 10th time and, and hear something they never heard before. And they're like, oh my God, the recording changed. And I'm like, no, the recording did not change, but you were not ready to hear what it was that I had to say. And so your brain gave you amnesia about it. And so when you hear it over and over and over and over again, then your brain begins to open up to the idea that it can receive the thing that it couldn't receive before. So I do highly recommend listening many, many times. Oh, I I intend to. Clearly, you have given me a lot to think about and opened a lot of doors. Okay. So, you know, if you were to talk to the people listening about your experience, what would you say? Oh, I would say that, I mean, parts of it are just nothing short of, of just really amazing in the way that you were able to drill in in a very short period of time. What have we been doing this an hour or so? Hour and a half. Yeah. 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 And you have drilled into and, and shown light on core things that have, have been in darkness for a long, long time. I thought I was doing work on myself and you're just like, wait, there's, but wait, there's more. (laughs) Yeah. That's, that's the story of life right there. (laughs) been working hard car on myself for 25 years and there's still stuff that just hit me in the face on Monday. So <laughs> yeah. 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 I, again, I, I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm so grateful that, that you offered this up and I'm, I just feel uh, incredibly, incredibly thankful that I got to, to do this with you. Yay. Thank you again. You're very welcome. And so if you guys are out there and you're listening and you'd like one of these, then the easy way to do that is to uh, go ahead and put in a review at iTunes. Please, a five star would be lovely. Uh, and and uh, and then take a picture before you submit, because when when you submit, it disappears for 24 to 48 hours. But before you submit it, take a picture 
and send a copy of that to us at support at uh, kellysparta.com. <clears throat> and you will get the, um, and you will, uh, you'll be entered into, yeah, I can talk. You'll be entered into the drawing. Uh, I'm trying to pull my energy back and talk at the same time. It's just not working. <laughs> And you'll be entered into the drawing to to win one of these. We are. I'm going to be doing two drawings this week since I was sick last week and couldn't do it. So we'll that will be four people uh, out of eight that we're going to do. So uh, get your reviews in soon so you don't miss out and you have the best chance of of winning your prize as well. And and then the final prize at the end is for a VIP day with me, which is a ten thousand dollar value. So. Uh, we will be and, and we will be putting everybody back into the mix at the end and uh, giving people a chance to win that as well. So definitely, definitely, definitely get your, your reading in or get your uh, review in so that we can get you on the list. And uh, that's it for this week. Thanks for listening. Don't forget that what you focus on is what expands and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We'll see you next week. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,